Hey everybody, it's Mickey, and today I'm sharing with you some quick and easy pantry meals. All of these recipes can be made ahead and frozen to be used later in the weeks ahead. So if you are new here, I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe. I put out new videos every week about all things home. So I don't know about how you guys have been feeling, but I have been much less motivated to get things done than I was in the beginning of all of this staying at home. You know, I don't know if it was the anxiety of everything that was going on, but I have definitely been in a funk. But everything is changing today. We are getting back in the kitchen to make some quick and easy pantry meals to feed our families and get back into the groove again. Becca is here to share an awesome peach cobbler recipe. We have an overnight breakfast casserole, crock pot beef tacos, and shepherd's pie. Next is the easiest crock pot beef tacos. This recipe is perfect for a simple Saturday dinner, and I am sure that you have all the ingredients for this in your kitchen right now. All you're going to need for this recipe is a beef chuck roast, a can of enchilada sauce, a can of beef broth, about a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar, which is optional, a sliced green bell pepper, red pepper, and half of a sliced onion, and you could use a packet of taco seasoning or just make a combination of your family favorite seasonings, adding some cumin for that Mexican flavor. Season up your chuck roast well, and you're going to brown it on both sides for about five minutes each in a pan of butter and olive oil. One of my favorite spices to use in recipes like this is this adobe seasoning from Penzi Spice Company. They really have the best combination of spices I have ever come across. They are so unique and they blend a bunch of different flavors together and I have never been disappointed with anything I've ever gotten from them. I'll leave a link to their website down below so you guys can check them out too. So once the roast is browned on both sides, just transfer it over to your crock pot. Now what I like to do at this point is to deglaze my pan with a little bit of white wine. Now this is completely optional. You can completely omit it or just use some beef broth to deglaze your pan, but it's just another way to layer flavors for a better taste. Once you pour the pan drippings over your roast, go ahead and lay on your red and green sliced peppers and your sliced onions on top. Combine the remaining beef broth and about three quarters of a can of the enchilada sauce with a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. Pour this all over the roast and sliced vegetables, cover and set on high for one hour, then on low for three to four hours until the meat comes to the proper temperature checked with a meat thermometer. When the beef has come up to temperature, take it and the veggies out of your crock pot. The beef will be super tender and will shred really easily, which makes it just perfect for tacos, or you can even serve this over rice. We like to add shredded cheese, sour cream, guacamole, lettuce, and serve it up in flour tortillas with a side of rice and beans. This is one of those meals that my kids love and they always eat up all of the leftovers throughout the week. One of the recipes that we are going to be making today um, and freezing is my version of shepherd's pie. I know that there are a lot of recipes out there and I'm sure your family is like mine. We have one that we have been using for years. So feel free to substitute whatever you guys like in the recipe. Now for mine, I like to use about a pound and a half of meatloaf mix. I use a um, 16 ounce bag of frozen vegetables. I chop up an onion a few mushrooms. I use about a tablespoon or two of tomato paste and I use a packet of brown gravy prepared and then of course for the topper I have my regular recipe of mashed potatoes. So my ground meat is about halfway through the browning process and I'm going to be adding the onion and the green pepper. I don't know if I mentioned the green pepper when I was showing you all of the ingredients we need, but you can add a green pepper if you want to. 
And then you're just going to mix this around and let it cook a little bit longer until the um, peppers and the onions start to soften and then you're going to add your mushrooms. I always like to share the really great kitchen gadgets that I use and love and this one I think is called a chop and brown but I'm going to leave a link to it down below. It's also in my Amazon store but it is one of those kitchen utensils that really come in handy. It's great to break up and brown any type of ground meat or sausage and it's also great you know like when you add in this case peppers and onions to your ground meat it just makes sure that everything is incorporated really well so I'm going to leave a link to this guy on down below. So in our pan we have our browned ground meat, we have onions and peppers, and I have some mushrooms, I have a bag of frozen mixed vegetables. I've seasoned everything really really well with garlic powder, salt and pepper, and Mrs. Dash. I've made a really good mess of my whole <laughs> stove top so you can you know choose to do that if you'd like. Now I'm going to put in um, one package, prepared package of the brown gravy. This is where you can add more if you'd like, depending on how much sauce you want with your um, shepherd's pie. I'm going to start with the one prepared package and see what that looks like. I'm going to add a couple tablespoons of tomato paste and a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. I have the meat and veggie mixture divided into these two pans. Our next step is to cover this all with the mashed potatoes. So these are all ready to set aside and let cool and then we are going to double wrap these with some aluminum foil and stick them in the freezer. This is one of those really hearty breakfast casseroles and it's one of those recipes that helps you use up all that leftover food stuff in your pantry or your refrigerator and you can use it for breakfast, brunch, or even breakfast for dinner. So what you're going to need for this recipe is a pound of ground sausage, mild or spicy, whatever you guys like, some chopped green peppers, red peppers, about a half of a chopped onion, whatever shredded cheese that you have on hand. I have a bunch of half used packages here. You're going to need five or six slices of bread, a cup and a half of milk, and about six eggs. Start by chopping up all your peppers and onions. This recipe is really forgiving, so you can put just about any vegetables that you have left over in your refrigerator in this casserole. I have added zucchini, broccoli, and even corn. Meanwhile, you can start browning your sausage in a pan. I like to put a little bit of olive oil in my pan first, just so that the sausage doesn't stick. Now, once it's about halfway browned, you can add your chopped vegetables and continue to cook until the veggies are soft and the meat is cooked through. Tear up your six pieces of bread and lay them in the bottom of a prepared nine by 13 pan. Layer your cooked sausage and veggies over top of the bread. Try to be sure to cover everything as evenly as possible. Next, cover your casserole and all of those little leftover bags of cheese. And then in a small bowl, you are going to combine your six slightly beaten eggs. You can add a little bit of Texas peat hot sauce, Worcestershire sauce, and season as you like. I always like to use Mrs. Dash and salt and pepper. And then add your cup and a half of milk. Beat together lightly and then pour on the top of your casserole, making sure that you cover as evenly as possible. Since this is an overnight casserole, just cover it all with some tin foil and stick it in your refrigerator overnight. So in the morning, you're just going to take it out and bake in a 375 degree oven for about an hour or until it is all set in the middle. This is the casserole that I make every Christmas Eve to have on Christmas morning, and it is the one that I am most requested to bring to family brunches. So lastly, for a little something sweet to end your day with, we have Rebecca's Hatch Top Peach Cobbler, which is just so delicious with a little side of vanilla ice cream or homemade whipped cream. Now this is a double crust cobbler, so I am going to leave the recipe of the crust Rebecca always uses in the information section down below. Spread out one recipe of dough in the bottom of a nine by 13 pan and set aside. In a saucepan over medium heat, cook three pounds of sliced peaches, 
orange juice, and butter. Once the butter is melted, you're going to add your sugar, cinnamon, nutmeg, and cornstarch. Combine and cook until well blended. Pour the peach mixture over the prepared crust in your 9 by 13 pan and roll out an additional recipe of dough. Cut into strips and form a latticework on top of the peach filling. Brush the top with melted butter and a sprinkle of sugar and bake in a 350 degree oven for 35 to 45 minutes until the top is nice and golden brown. We serve ours with a little bit of vanilla ice cream on the side. I'm going to leave this full recipe in the information section down below. So thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope this video helped to get you motivated and get back on track. I am out of my rut and will be doing a clean with me zone cleaning video coming up at the end of the week. Please join our community over on Facebook and don't forget to subscribe. I would love to have you all back as part of our YouTube family. So until I see you in that next video, I hope that you love the life that you have. Be kind to each other, stay safe, and I will see you again soon. Bye.